Good morning, guys. Um, so today I am back in my classroom. Sorry, let me pick that up. Um, I was kind of nervous coming back. I guess I felt like I had so much more to do. But just kind of looking around, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm going to spin you around and kind of show you where I left off and what needs to be done. And then I'll... I'll visit with you for a minute, so let me spin you around. Okay, so I left all my desks stacked. Today, my goal is to get those spread out a little bit. I'm going to just put them in groupings for now until we know a little bit more about um, what's going on. And I'll talk to you about some of the board meeting, what, what our roles were and stuff in a minute. Um, so I've got all of that area that stuff over there I'm gonna try to load in my van by myself here in a little bit my goal today is to get this bin cleaned out sorted and oh my little thing fell from up there so I need to get that rehung um, so that's all my center games I talked to you about that in my um, other videos but I want to get those sorted and cleaned out and then as the year goes through I'm going to sort through the games each month and put them in better places but I want to go ahead and get that bin cleaned up and sorted that's the stuff that has to go um, I still don't know what I'm gonna do with this so that'll be interesting I gotta find a spot for that this is actually um, a little magnetic board that I use um, I used to use it for like word work station. My kids would pull a bin out from here. It might have magnetic letters in it and some uh, word cards and they would make those words on that board in my other room and I just had that board hanging underneath here. Um, obviously I don't know if we're going to be able to use that so I don't know if I'll even mess with hanging it right now. So that's where we're at. I do want to handle my bookshelves, um, but that can come, and that's that section. So, not as much to do as I thought. I mean, I still have a lot to do. Um, if you're a teacher, you kind of understand. Getting the furniture placed out is one big step. I need to call and get the janitors to remove those two tables that are stacked up over there. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm going to spin you around and I'm going to visit with you about what's going on. Okay, so I wanted to visit with you about what our plan is for the coming year. As of right now, our district voted um, for three models, a face-to-face, -face, a virtual school, and then um, a almost virtual school, but it's like bell-to-bell. -bell. So the students would be watching teachers who are live in the classroom possibly with other students. Um, I don't know what's going to happen as the numbers in our state are keep they keep growing so I don't know if face-to-face -face is going to be happening but I'm going to be planning right now for face-to-face -face contact with my students. I think that they're going to um, set up our rooms with um, dividers or some kind of barriers between our students. Um, so my plan today is just to get the desks spread out, put in place as best I can, um, and set up a little bit. I want to get my books just put on the shelf and kind of organized. I still need to do some of my labels, redo some of the labels. So I want to get that done, but I can do that from home throughout the week, and I might be able to video that and show you. I had a plan to video at home last weekend, but I have three children, and it is so difficult to video at home. Excuse me. They are constantly needing something, and if you have kids, you completely understand where I'm coming from. I have a 5-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 14-year-old, and... I feel like sometimes the 14 year old needs more than some of the other thing, uh, some of my other two, but it's just really difficult to video from home. But I'm going to do my best throughout this week because I won't be up here this much 
um, this week. I'm going to do my best to try to get a video filmed from home um, for you guys and maybe I can do a um, like a how to make labels for your book center video or something like that but um, I'm, I've got to redo some of my library labels because they're 15, 16 years old so it's time um, so I'm going to get my books put in boxes and put on the shelf so that I can get that stuff cleared away because I want to get all of those green books put up um, out of the way and I need to get if I can get the furniture put in my van to go away um, and then the center stuff done so I'm gonna work on center stuff first just because I can spread that stuff out and I think it'll make it faster and then I'm gonna organize my tables or the desks and then get some things put away um, I would like to know what future kinds of videos you guys would like to see. Um, I've been so overwhelmed with comments and questions and the wonderful community that I have gotten so far on my videos and I appreciate all of the feedback and all of the support so much as I get my channel kind of restarted. Um, like I said, I've been a teacher. This will be year 17, and I'm still learning um, from other teachers, and it blows me away um, when I can get, you know, all of the wonderful comments and the feedback and the advice. So I encourage you guys to comment in this video and let me know what you would like to see next, because once I get my desk set out, I kind of have to wait and see what kind of PPE equipment they're going to put in our rooms before I move them any further and so I guess my plan for the rest of the week if I come up would be just to get like my bulletin boards hung and just kind of cleaned up books put away you know just little tinkering stuff in the classroom until we kind of have a more of a set plan we were supposed to meet before all this happened we usually have a couple days to meet as a team in the summer and discuss curriculum and look at how things are going to be laid out and start lesson planning and that's kind of on hold right now kind of you know everything that we normally do is all on hold so um, I'm just gonna try to get done you know what I can get done I guess and I can show you like planning for the first week of school but we don't know when the first week of school is gonna be yet that's hadn't happened and I know that our students are going to continue to have their one-to-one -one devices, um, so I might be able to do some planning for them to have that. I don't. I know that they're not going to be able to have contact with each other. There's not going to be any rotations through the room. I can still do centers. Um, it'll just be in a different way. It'll be more. You know, they'll have to do independent things. So I'm thinking I can use some of my IKEA bins. And then I can just wipe down things at the end of the day. They would just use it one time. And then at the end of the day, I would just clean it. Um, so that it would be useful for the next day. So like as far as my center games, I think we can still use those. Because all of my stuff is laminated. So it can be wiped off and then set out to dry and clean um, for the next day. Um, you know, school's just going to look different for a long time. So it's just a matter of getting used to our new normal and accepting it and saying how can I reach my babies and do what I need to do and make a difference in their life in this new era. So that's the plan. I'm going to move you guys and set up, um, well I'm going to do my center stuff first. So I'll show you um, how I organize all of those and I'll try to link as many of the things in the description box today as I can. So. Let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm going to sort through this tub. Um, most of this is like center games and stuff, so I'm going to split. This is all of the stations by standard math stuff that I was doing in back in February, early March. Um, so I'm going to sort through all of this and put it in the bins. Um, and try to get my bins, my center bins kind of reorganized and I will show you, I will catch up with you and show you how that looks in just a second.
Um, so I just dumped everything else out of that bin so that I could get to it and go through it. I'm gonna bring my trash can over and sort through some of that stuff because some of it is so old and it's grimy and gross and I'm just gonna toss it, I'm gonna chunk it. So I'm gonna bring the trash can over and I'm gonna go through all of that mess. Okay, so I want to show you where I am. I kind of got that big mess cleaned up. These go to my writing center. These are a bunch of extra things. This is kind of like a hodgepodge of stuff and I don't have time to go through it today. I know most of it is like just kind of random center games that I know I can use. So this is all my sight words stuff for my sight word center and we won't be doing sight word center in the same way. So I'm just going to put that in there. This is all like random and this is sight words. Now we could probably do these, but I'm going to put them in my random center bin. This is all my random literacy stuff for right now, just so that I know where it's at when I need to go sort it. This will be just kind of a weekend project, I think, for me. This is all broken, so I think it's time to say goodbye to that. Those are broken. We're making progress, so I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, we're doing good. Okay, so I kind of wanted to give you an update for what I've gotten done so far. Um, I did clean up some of my center stuff. I'm not going to worry about it too much because, like I said, month by month throughout the year, and as the year changes, I can sort through. Got a weird kink in my hair. I can sort through um, those bins and just do it month by month so it doesn't all have to be done today. But I did get some stuff organized in my desk. So I'll spin you around. This was always like my drawer that just kind of held all the junk. So I put like pens and stuff that I use all the time in that one. This is going to remain empty for if I need, I call it my June box. It's just where I store all my students' little things that they bring and they shouldn't have them. So I'll just store them in there. 
I'm going to miss my markers. I'm going to just put all of my markers in here, but I just put that pack in there real quick. So the drawer is not very deep. Like it stops right here. So I can't fit a whole lot in there, but I think it's much more organized now. We'll see how long it stays that way. And then this drawer is still kind of a mess, but these pens that I showed you, I was so excited about these because I thought they were going to be like my normal felt tip pens that I love. Um, let's see if I have one. This, these. The flare pens. I thought maybe I had found something cool, but they are not. They are much different. They write, um, they write much different. So I'll probably just let my students have these and just use like the darker colors for my grade book because I, I do like to write with a very fine tip in my grade book. Speaking of which, I need to write that on my list as a grade book for this year because I don't have one. So that's where we're at with that. So now I'm going to take you over to that thing that fell that I was showing you. And I've always just kept papers that I use a lot on it. But I was realizing the other day, there's a lot of these papers that I don't really use throughout the year anymore because we're so digital now. We're so much more... Um, digital so I think I'm going to clear a lot of these out and kind of reorganize them so I'll show you what what we have right now and some of them fell when I had to move it but this actually has I don't know if you can see that it actually has letters in it like my punch out letters um, for when I use those around the classroom and most of those I think I can just toss because I need to get a new set that's my bucket filler cards where students would like to fill a friend's bucket so that's just extra copies of that that's bulletin board that's all bent and gross so that's going to go and this is just a random odd and even game that I use at the beginning of the year so I can put that in the math notebook that I have for that so that can go so already I've got the bottom three I can kind of clear out this is a lot of like writing paper that I use for different things. Oops, let me show it a little bit better. So a long time ago, we copied a, a rubric on the top of writing paper so that when I was grading writing for my students, and I know there's a, a bit of a shadow there, but it's just the spot I'm in the classroom. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so we have the writing paper, and we had the rubric on the top. Let's see if I can my camera to zoom. I think my phone works better than this camera. I think this camera is just about to go. Let's see if I can just zoom in on it for you. Yeah, it's not showing it. Ew, I think it's just the lighting. Sorry, guys. Anyway, so we had the rubric on the top, and then as I graded it, I could circle it, and even if I wasn't actually taking a grade on this, parents knew what to look for to help their students. So that's a good piece to have, and it just has, I'll see if I can, I'll read it off to you. So it says, uh, one, few capital letters, poor punctuation, incorrect spelling. And by incorrect spelling, I don't mean um, incorrect invented spelling. I'm talking like maybe a sight word that we have gone over or a spelling pattern that we have focused on, that kind of incorrect spelling. Um, sloppy handwriting, poor spaces, or it does not make sense. So I could just highlight those things in that field and then you know, one, two, three, or four, and then I could give my students points, and I really liked that, especially for first graders. It kind of gave them a little bit more of an idea of what was going on. This is just writing paper with a picture. This is um, like steps to order paper. I think I got these from Deanna Jump and Dee Dee Will's writing sets. I think that's where those two came from. In fact, I'm almost positive. How to topic paper. This is I know is Dee Dee Will's super sentences paper. So these are just things that I would copy a lot. I kept those in there and I'll probably go ahead and keep those in there. This is extra copies of listening session station. This is one of those papers that can go digital now because my students will be using their iPads for centers and center response pages. So those can go digital. So I won't need all of those. This paper can't go digital though. Stamp and write or stamp and draw. So they would stamp a letter and draw a picture to go with it. I love those. More of those listenings. This is a lot of just writing paper. 
um, a response page for setting, like a quick exit ticket page that again can go digital this year. Setting of the story, this is like a response page for Reading Center, so they, if they read a book then they would have to write down the title of the book, draw a picture of the setting, and tell me how they felt about the story. It's just holding students accountable um, papers, so when we were in centers they were actually having to do something. But again, I think I can do digital on all that. Um, that's another stamping page, that's another stamping page. If I can find some of these centers, I will definitely try to link them for you because I definitely want to give credit to those teachers on TPT that um, created all this. I'm almost positive most of this stuff came from Dee Dee Wills. So I will try to link. I know the stamping set. I'm pretty sure that that's her stamping set. So I don't know about this one, though. I don't know if I can find that one. Paragraph planning page. This might be Reagan Tunstall's. So that's that. That's that pocket. So I'm going to keep most of those and I'll have to just scan in some of those that are digital um, into our um, thing that we use for our school and I put it in my Google Drive for right now. That's a script for lowercase. That's a note. This is more center paper response pages which again I do want them to continue to do this kind of stuff because it practices cutting and they need some of those cutting skills during their center time so I probably will keep you know pages like this and then I can just give them one give them um, this is Reagan Tunstall so whatever spelling pattern I was using for that week so if I was doing um, short A for example then they may have a picture of a cat and then they'd have to practice writing a sentence so I like doing stuff like this because then they can practice cutting, gluing, especially at the beginning of the year where they still need some of that, at least our students in our area, they still need practice cutting and gluing. Um, so this is rubrics here, so that can stay. Um, buddy spell check. Um, I can do a video on buddy spell check later, but that's what these pages are. That's just a whole big old pile of buddy spell check. And again, sorry, I don't know if I will use that in the same way because we will not be able to do buddy spell check this year, um, at least for a while. They won't be able to get that close to each other to do buddy spell check, so I probably won't use those. That's a sorting page, and that's just a bunch of copies because we would sort for our um, word work when we were so if we were doing short A I might do short A not short A so and I'd have pictures and they'd glue them down but I use journals now for that so and they just put it in their interactive notebook so I don't think I'm going to need those I'll probably take those out that's the extra blends chart I'll probably keep that just until this is um, a spelling thing I will try to put a link here for my spelling how we do spelling but that is our um, like if I have a high group that isn't doing the spelling pattern that we need because you know you always have those kids that can spell really really well at the beginning of first grade and they might need um, a little bit more of a challenge so I have a separate spelling group for them I'll try to link that video of, and of how I explain that down below I do do some things different now but I'll go ahead and link that video but that's the spelling contract so they have to do basically one thing from each column and I always just kept extra copies of that. Uh, Universal Math Screener, that's the spelling tip test page, that's writing, I showed you that last week. Um, math Games, that's a sentence a day paper. So a lot of writing papers, that right there is, I think it's Primary Techie, it's the Watch Think Color page, so I had extra copies of that. More writing paper, and then that's at the top. So I think, you know, you guys can see a lot of this stuff is going to end up coming out which will make this lighter and I can actually use it a little bit more efficiently. So I'm going to go ahead and set you down and pull out what I don't need and separate it and then I'm going to make a separate stack for things that need to get scanned into my Google Drive so that we can make those digital. So I will be back in just a minute. Okay so I am back from lunch. Um, I think I'm going to work on getting these down real quick and then I'm going to move desks. So I'm going to set you guys down and I will 
that you see what I'm doing. Okay, so my camera cut off on me, so I'm going to kind of update you with what I've been doing. I got the stuff down from way over there and just moved it. Um, I collapsed my couch and moved it over by the door, and I started spreading my desks out. And I still go back and forth of whether or not I want desks or tables in here. I, I know I keep telling myself to use the desks because that would be easy and smart and safer, but I cannot spread my desks out three feet apart even in this room. I just don't know. I think I'm going to try to get rid of that. Put it in another room or something. And then I can have a little bit more space over there. I don't think I will be using that easel very much, but I'm not going to get rid of it. It's, um, I, you know, eventually we'll hopefully be able to go back and into things a little bit more normal. Maybe not this year, but we'll see. And so I just don't see getting rid of that easel. I don't know what to do because I cannot spread these desks out. I was going to just put them in pods and then try to get plexiglass dividers to go in between them and then try to only sit two students at a pod. But then I go back to, well, if I was using those tables, I could have three students at the tables, pretty spread apart, have plexiglass in between the tables, and I could store all of their stuff in these so that each student would have a number. And obviously I need to redo those numbers because they're worn out. But so like I could do one, two, three, four, and have like odds here, evens here. And then I could clean those really easily. But I still feel like having them in a desk is going to be the better option. But there's no way to spread out the kids. I could maybe, I guess, do three across, maybe four across. But that only gives me three rows. And then I'm, you're going to have some kids that are super, super close to the board. I don't know. I've just never taught like that. I've always had them in groups or in pods. I've never even had student desks that were in rows or anything like that other than during testing time. I've always just had them in pods. So I don't know what the answer is here. I'm going to go ahead and spread them out and put them in pods. I think I can just keep this pod here, have that pod there, have a pod here where those tables are, and have a pod over here. And that gives me 16 groupings. And then again, I'm kind of tempted to do no tables, no desks, and get sticky dots. And they just sit on the floor, and they can spread really far apart if that was the case, because then they wouldn't have a big desk in their way. And then I could have them almost easily six feet apart from each other. But then they would kind of be all over the room, and it might be a mess. I don't know. I've always wanted to do no tables, no desks. Maybe I should go talk to my principal. I'll check back with you guys in a minute. All right, so that's some of my books. Um, I don't remember if I told you guys about this box in a previous video, so I'm going to go ahead and um, let you guys know what this box is. This is a box full of books that I got for a grant, with a grant I should say, last year. They came right before spring break, um, about the second to last week of February, end of February, and then I was out, and then... I had training, and then we had spring break. <laughs> so I never even got to use these very much with my kids. I did use a couple of them. But I, basically I had written a grant for some nonfiction titles to use in my classroom um, with my small group reading. Um, and these would have been for my um, kiddos that... You know, obviously could have read this material or I could have used them, um, you know, for various research projects. I had also planned to use like these with some of our um, activities in the spring where we were going to like dive deep into the text, analyze some things, and then do some comprehension, maybe some fun science stuff with it. I just had all kinds of them. If you've 
I'm not saying these is awesome. What if you had an animal nose? What if you had an animal tail? What if you had animal ears? What if you had animal feet? What if you had animal eyes? What if you had animal hair? And I know there's probably lots of units on TPT to go with this, but um, I thought actually I could use one of these each day or every other day to like start a science experiment, like get them intrigued and get them thinking and then do some fun um, experiments with it or some STEM things. We were going to use these um, books when we were talking about famous people, Martin Luther King, Albert Einstein, Jackie Robinson, one of my boys favorites, Jackie Robinson, and then of course you can't live in Central Florida and not do Walt Disney. So I had those, and then these are all National Geographic, and there's sets of six for every book. Um, so I have to go through and level them, but I can do that throughout the year. I can level them throughout the year. So I'm going to put those in separate baskets and put those up there with those books. Those are uh, my collection of guided reading books right there in those blue baskets. So I'm going to put those up there so that I can sort them and label them and get them tagged and everything. And these are the books that I usually keep in my library for my students. Um, and I just kind of have them separated out. So let me show you how I separate these out. And I'm going to try to do this as best I can with one hand. So that one, I've got pumpkins on it. So you see my little label and this camera. I'm going to have to get rid of it. That's my label, pumpkins, it's because this Winnie the Pooh book, um, even though it's Pooh, I could have put it under Winnie the Pooh, but I didn't have that many Winnie the Pooh books, so I put it under pumpkins. These are some of the National Geographic books that I've purchased before, before this set. That's how I knew I fell in love with them, the National Geographic kids. So I have a basket full of those, and I need to get a label on those. So... I think I have that one, that one. It's a whole stack here of them. Um, so all those need to get labeled. Um, and then if I go through some of the books that we keep out now, I also have seasonal books. So like when end of September rolls around, I'll have a basket here. Um, but then I also have books that I keep out. Now y'all tell me your opinion. My kids always love the Little Bill books. I know that they're written by Bill Cosby. I don't agree or support that they're written by Bill Crosby at all, but my kids love the Little Bill books. They love some of the, the storyline to them. Um, they love the fact that they see children of all colors and shapes and sizes in it. So I've, I haven't put them out in a couple years, but you tell me what you think because I have a whole bunch of them. All right, my camera just did something funny. Sorry. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, so let me show you my sorting so far. So this is my stack of Berenstain Bears. I usually keep that out all year. The kids like those. This is favorite authors. So a bunch of like random books, but books by favorite authors. I don't put those out yet. That's a, a lot of like winter books for them. I have a big stack of nonfiction. I have Clifford's in there. I just got to get them all out. So I have a section of Clifford's. I have a section of Arthur, 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 <laughs> Curious George, and Froggy. Then I have Zoo Book magazines that I keep out throughout the year and I add to them and kind of take away the ones that are yucky. Um, this one, and then I've got like Disney books. This whole section here is like I can read. It's the I can read books. If you can see that, there's my Clifford, and then I have some Dr. Seuss ones that I let my students have access to. And like I said, I need to make a label for that one. And those are going to go up in my cabinet, and some of these are going to go up in the cabinet. So that's where we're at so far with them. So I'm going to get those put in the baskets and put on my shelves. Okay, so. While I was um, sorting out my books, I thought I'd show you one of the things that I use to level my books. If I don't know the level, so let's take 
this book right here, Trains. This is one of those books that I got in the grant. And I particularly don't um, sort, so there's my books right there. I do not levelize them in my library by guided reading level or DRA level. I like to just put them in there by topic um, for my students so that they can quickly find something that interests them and then they can put that in their book box. Um, so let's say we were going to do this one and I wanted to use this for a group which is what these books what I bought them for or what I got the grant for. So I have several apps oops, that can do that. The first app, and I know this is really hard to see because of this camera, but this is Book Wizard. Then I have um, Book Scanner. Um, I also have one called eSchool Plus, and I don't like that one as much, so I never use it. And then I love this one down here, Level It. So the three that I use the most often, and Book Wizard is one of the ones I use a lot because most of my books come from Scholastic, and it's a Scholastic. Um, let me show you what it looks like. It's a Scholastic app. Um, so if it comes from Scholastic, chances are it'll be on here. Now they don't have everything, like I said, because this book is not on there. So, um, but it's super easy. You just take a picture of the ISB number or the barcode. Um, book Scanner tells you the quiz numbers if it's an AR book. So if you have AR or Renaissance in your school, this is a great one because you scan it. For example, if I did this one. So it's searching, and there it is, and it's going to tell me the quiz number, it's going to tell me the level, the AR level, which this one's a 2.8, how many points it's worth, how many words are in the book, and then you can also add the feature to find the Lexile, but like I said, I don't use, we don't have AR in our school, so I don't use that as often. Level It is the one that I use, and you do have to create an account for Level It, but once you create it, then you can catalog your books, you can create your own library, you, when a student goes to check one out, then you can scan it in, so it's really, really great. And I don't use it as much as I should, but I'll just show you. So there it goes, it's searching, it found it, it tells you the Lexile level, level and then the Guided Reading level, which this is a J. Um, and then all the other information. So now you can add it to your library. Um, and then once you have your library built up, you can create, oops, sorry, you can create different sections and then your students, I started this a little while back, but um, I only have two books in there now, see? So I liked that because then it helps you to keep up with your books, especially if they're putting them in book boxes or if you allow your students to take them home. Now again, I don't know what this year will look like as far as books, but I'm going to go ahead and um, levelize those probably over a weekend. Um, I'll just, or you know, a little bit at a time take them and start scanning them in. But that's the great thing about this app is you can just do a couple at a time and you don't have to sit and do them all at once. So I did get these on the shelf, and I do like the fact that they're all the same with the exception of this one. But here's my question, and if you have book tubs in your library, let me know what you use. Okay, so hold on. My camera's about to go out, so let me switch batteries. Okay, sorry about that. My battery died, so I had to switch batteries. Okay, so tell me what you use for your book boxes, because I don't necessarily like these. And they were $3 a box, but these shelves, they don't fit them the way I thought they would. Um, I do like the fact that they're all white, but then again, it's white on white, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to keep them. I had to put the labels on them. I know the labels aren't there. Like I said, I want to update some of my labels and make, make them a little bit... Um, cleaner and nicer, but I don't think I like them having to be turned like this because like this one's okay, but like if a student's coming over and they're flipping through books, it's not going to take it long before these get turned around backwards or whatever. It just seems like this is, this here is really, really super long, and unless you have a lot of books, then there's all this empty space and then they're going to fall and bend. Now I can do them all this way, but then they won't fit on the shelf. Which is how I had it before. I had them 
all this way. So like, these are all Clifford books. I'll have a Clifford label right here. Students can go and flip through, find the book that they want, put it in their book box, and then it stays on the shelf. But I don't like them being turned this way. Because like this group here, if I use these, I would have to have the label here, but the books are this direction. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So I need some ideas and I'll show you. I always had these baskets. I know I talked about this before. I've always had those baskets. I had navy blue ones, you know, 17 years ago when I first started teaching and I bought a bunch. And then I bought all white ones so that I could keep them all the same color. And now I have kind of a mix of the two. And I bought them because I liked the holes in them because before I started using glue gun or tape, I would just fasten them with the holes. But it seems like I'm running into this problem with any of these. You know, they sell these at Lakeshore and I think they're $5 each at Lakeshore. Target was $30 each. So for 10 bins, I already spent $30 and I would rather not spend a lot of money on these. I want to keep them kind of clean. I don't want to spend much more than and 30 and I really only need about 10 in the center because that's all I can fit and if I use them this way that's all I can fit I can really only use them one direction like that because that's just the sizing of the shelving and these are IKEA shelves they're not the greatest but they were I think $12 for the shelf so they work for now so Leave me a comment in the um, comments down below. Leave me, some, you know, let me know what you do. I'd love to know. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna catch you up with where I left off. I went and visited with one of our other teachers um, to find out what they used in some of the other rooms for their book boxes, and she has exact same target boxes as I do. So I'm going to stick with the ones that I bought and just kind of see if I can figure it out. But please, if you have any suggestions on book boxes, the ones that I used to use that I showed you, I got from Walmart many, many years ago. Um, I've seen the ones at Big Lots, but those are too tall. So I can't use those for that particular shelf. So I need shorter ones. And I don't want to spend too much money. And the dollar, the ones at Dollar Tree that are dollar are too flimsy. They, those break. It's like these. These here. Um, I mean, I could use those, but they're pretty flimsy. And I don't know if they would hold up. So that's a thought. But if you have any other ideas for book boxes, we were visiting and talking about, um, you know, what's going to happen with our library and if our kids are even going to get to look at books and have books and things like that so that's still up in the air but I'd love to hear your ideas and your thoughts on the library um, I'm gonna go I spent way too long talking <laughs> it's kinda what you do when you have teacher friends in the school you end up visiting for way too long especially at the end of the summer so I'm gonna go and finish putting stuff away and I will catch you guys back up in a minute alright guys so I wanted to show you where I'm at I hung this little sign. This is one of my favorite signs. In our class, we are a team. We respect each other. We try our best. We learn from our mistakes. We dream big. We celebrate each other's successes. All done in my shark theme. And I hung my focus wall sign, although I don't know if that's where it's going to stay, but that's where it's going to be for now. And I got that situated, so I'm going to work on the labels for that tonight got that done and I just have to put this one over there I decided to take out my little bill ones and replace them with my little golden book ones just because and so I have an extra one down there I can put some more books in I may separate out one of those bins and make two bins or I may put like back to school books when it's time but that's where we're at now so I'm going to put these up. I do have to keep one crate up there with books as I'm switching stuff out in the library um, because I emptied out three crates 
to put all those in the library and I don't have enough space. So one of those is just going to stay up there with books. But I decided, because I have a lot of, of the I Can Read books, and like I have a new pack that I just got from Scholastic. Woo, it's upside down. I got this pack. I have one on my desk that's Fly Guy. I have another pack here that I ordered from Scholastic that I can read. And then I got these, which there's only one copy of each of these. Um, but, so I was thinking, if I'm wheeling myself around, if the kids have to stay separated, and I'm wheeling myself around to do guided reading or just calling them over one at a time to do guided reading because they can't do it in groups, then I don't have to use the same book. We'll have our iPads and I can do guided reading with the iPad or I can just use these books and if I only have one copy of the book that's okay. Um, so I can just kind of make it work that way. It'll make lesson planning a little bit more tricky but in order for my students to get guided reading I'm gonna do whatever it takes. So I'm gonna use those books up there for that because they're more um, levelized and I can actually accurately level them but this way I have lots of extra books and I don't have to um, always use digital. I don't mind using the digital from time to time. We can do books through Get Epic during our distance learning. I did 30 minute one-on-one -on -one reading lessons and I just had my kids sign up for a time slot and I did one-on-one -on -one reading lessons um, and I did digital books that way with them so they could still get guided reading. Sorry. Um, but I, so I can still do that and they can use their iPads but I also like to put books in their hands if I can. I don't know if we'll be allowed to but if I can I want to put books in their hands. So that's the plan. I'm going to put the Little Bill books up until I kind of decide what to do with those. Um, and then I just didn't have enough froggy so I took those out. Um, so let me show you some. I got that hung, I got that hung, which that doesn't take very long. But I have, it is 4.25 now. I have about 20 minutes before I have to leave. I'm going to try to get my alphabet chart and my number line hung up before I go. So that's my next step. And I will show you guys where I'm at when I leave. All right, friends, so I'm wrapping up and I'm going to spin you around and show you what I got done today and where I'm at and what is the plan for the next time I come. So spin you around. Okay, so not much has changed. I did move my chairs over there and I kind of cleaned this area up over here. Um, I told you about my signs being hung. I got my alphabet and my numbers hung. Um, I'm going to try to squeeze in zero right there, but I don't know if I can get it in, so we'll see. But my books, I'm going to work on my book boxes next. I've decided that this little tub is going to go um, out. I think I can take out my couch and all that stuff today, get that out of here. I'm still thinking about getting rid of that with all my big books, not get rid of my big books. I'm keeping my big books. I'm just going to store them differently so that that is an extra piece of furniture that can go. Um, yeah, desk is still a mess, which kind of always is. I just realized that they gave me two sets of the science. These are science workbook things that they go with our curriculum. They gave me two sets of those, so I'm gonna have to get rid of one of those and Next is to empty all those boxes out and get this station. So next time I come, I'm going to go ahead and get writing hung. And I'm going to get this bulletin board hung. I'm going to get my labels printed. So I'm going to bring my printer up next time. Get my labels printed. I went ahead and um, unstacked those bins and I love them even more than I thought I was going to. The crates won't stay there but they're just there for right now. My crate seats I'm going to spread them out. I may use crate seats at a table grouping if I keep the desks and one of you guys had a fantastic idea about recovering them with vinyl so that they were easier to write, uh, wipe off so I'm going to check in on that over the next couple weeks. 
see if my mom can help me get those recovered. So, and there's the stations by standard that I emptied out today. I need to unplug this so I don't forget. I'm terrible about that. So, let me unplug that real fast. Ooh. Ooh. That is a very hot glue gun. And then I gotta get those stacked up there. I forgot about those. So, those are gonna go up. But yeah, so this is the room so far. It's looking like a classroom now. Just need to get things hung up on the walls. I have a shark that I draw out that I always put there. I'm going to try to get it done in the next couple of weeks sometime. Um, it says take a bite out of a book. And it's a shark. So that's where we're at. And I'm pretty happy with that. This tub is actually all of my shark stuff that I've set out for display. I need to get that done in my door cover my shark giant shark door cover I'm sad that a lot of my shark stuff won't get to go out because of this year but you know it will make do it is what it is I used to have sharkies that hung from the ceiling and little spinny things that hung from the ceiling and they don't want that this year so you know we will make it fun otherwise we will work it out I'm getting excited so that's it I think I'm pretty set up now the next videos let me spin you around so the next videos are going to be um, things that I get done within the classroom if there is a video that you'd like to see something that you're wondering about um, you want to see me do some planning anything like that just leave it in the comments and I will make sure I put it on my list of things to do I'd be happy to do any kind of video that you guys want to see. Um, I know that you like the classroom setup videos. I'm pretty much set up. There's not a whole lot else that I can do, so I'm going to have to start doing some planning. I think I'll have maybe one more day of setup. It'll kind of, maybe even be a half day setup where I'm just going to kind of clean up, do the bulletin boards, and put the rest of the things away. But other than that, I think I'm ready to move on to organization for back to school. We do have our students' names on a list but we don't know which families might choose some of the options that I shared with you. Um, so I don't want to write names on anything, but I am going to go ahead and start printing numbers, getting numbers situated and put on things. Um, I'm going to print their, their name plates for their book bags. I don't put the names on them yet, but I'm going to put, print their name um, plates for their school boxes. And if we choose to do something other than school boxes, I can still use those. So I'm going to start printing stuff and laminating and organizing. So if you want to see that kind of video, then give this video a thumbs up. And I know I can do one of those next. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, I think I'm all good. And I'm going to uh, head out. It is almost 5 o'clock, so... I have some errands to run, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when I make new videos. I will try to get about two more up this week, so be looking for uh, those, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.